There are still many questions about a body found inside a burning car on a Lexington road. We'll hear from one of the people who found that car last night. What hundreds of volunteers around Kentucky will be doing to fight a disease that impacts people around the country. This is WQIT News at 6. Good evening and thanks for watching. It's still a mystery tonight. What led to the death of a person found inside a burning car along a Lexington Road? Now, so far, investigators are not releasing a lot of details. This all happened last night at the intersection of Elkchester Road and Red Road. That's not far from Old Frankfurt Pike. Today, Miranda Combs talked to some people who found that car. It's our top story at 6. This is a fairly remote part of Fayette County. Homes are just sprinkled along this road, so it was quite a shock when neighbors found a burning car last night. They call this intersection Chicken Corner for obvious reasons. It's usually quiet, but not last night. About 7.30 last night. Jesse Bentley is still shaken by what he saw. He snapped this picture of firefighters working to put out the flames. It was bad. The smoke was really bad. You could see black smoke from miles. Bentley says he was deer hunting with his brother when they heard a loud boom and saw smoke. They ran to the car, but it was too late. Started screaming and hollering, and we didn't hear nobody in the vehicle, so, you know, we backed up because it was really, really hot. He wouldn't find out until later that a body was inside the car. In the hours following the fire, questions still remain, and images still haunt the neighbors down this rural county road. Who knows? You know what happened? I'm just going to be more aware of my, watch my surroundings down here. You know, that's all I can do. A neighbor we talked to in the property right next door says police were out here for much of the night and even into the morning. In Fayette County, Miranda Combs, WKYT. That body was sent for an autopsy in Frankfurt this morning. The coroner's office is still trying to identify the person and find a cause of death. Now to a developing story we're tracking out of Georgetown tonight. Police say someone fired shots inside an apartment complex on the Georgetown College campus earlier today. And now they're trying to figure out why. Monique Blair joins us live from Georgetown with the latest on that. Monique? Hi, Sammy. Yeah, Georgetown police tell me they got the call around 1230 this afternoon that shots had been fired into this Georgetown College dormitory here on Military Street. Now you can see right here on this door what appears to be two bullet holes. Also, a couple more holes are in another door just a couple of units down from where I'm standing. Now, Georgetown police tell me this incident probably happened in the early morning hours today. And right now, police say it does look like one of the bullets did go all the way through one of these doors. Now, I just talked to some students who live inside this building, and they tell me they were home when this incident happened, but nobody was hurt. And they really didn't know this happened until they came outside and saw their door like this today. Now, right now, a motive has not been Released, but police say they are actively continuing to investigate this incident. Of course, we will have much more on this very developing incident tonight on WKYT at 11 o'clock. For now, I'm reporting live in Georgetown, Monique Blair, WKYT. And tonight, we're also tracking the investigation into a reported shooting at a Lexington gas station. It happened just after four this afternoon at the Marathon on Trent Boulevard. Investigators say one person was taken to the hospital, but that person's condition is not known right now. So far, Lexington police have not released a lot of details about the investigation or if there are any suspects. And Lexington police still trying to figure out what led to another shooting near a Lexington motel. Police say a 24-year-old man was riding in a car on Buena Vista Way this morning when another person in the car shot him. They say they found the victim in the parking lot of the Microtel Motel. Police say he was taken to the hospital with serious but non-life-threatening injuries. Police have not found the shooter. They think that person was in a black Toyota Camry. Police think the shooter and the victim knew each other. Vandals tried to steal the fun from a Pulaski County park. Investigators say the vandals took equipment used on softball fields at Wheeler Park. The family of the man who helped build the park said he was devastated. But today, they had a surprise for him and the community. Caitlin Sentner has the story new at 6. This has always been home. This is where my family is. For Paula Christopher, the softball diamond is chocked full of memories. You know, Dad would come out and toss me softballs for hours or teach me how to drive. You know, basically he taught me how to drive in the open field up there. Dad and two of her uncles built Wheeler Park on 20 acres back in 1979. 
It's a lively place for playing some ball and spending some time in fellowship. The whole 20 acres was probably, you know, chest high um, and weeds. Over time, the diamonds lost their luster, but Christopher tells us that's because earlier this summer, vandals stole everything needed to keep the fields up and running. The boxes to the lots were all opened and um, kind of destroyed. And you can see on this side, you know, where they had taken some metal off of the buildings. Most of the damage was done to the concession stand and garage where the tractor, her dad's toy, was stored. They either pushed this in um, or pried the garage door open. Family couldn't let vandals steal their summer, so that's when they decided dad deserved a surprise. Yeah, bring Tyler on, uh, and then if we need to take him home, we can. Okie okay, dokie, okay. love you, bye. Yes, no. Family pulled together and got the field in shape to give the ballpark its second shot all behind Dad's back. <laughs> he has a clue now. <laughs> you have to get out of the car, Dad. You have to get out of the car. <laughs> Christopher fibbed a little bit, but Dad would forgive his little girl for it. I figured this out about Plaza County High School. Something was going on. <laughs> First time in 35 years I had been here. It broke my heart. Now there's just one thing left to do. We'll play some ball, Ruth. In Pulaski County, Caitlin Setner, WKYT. Oh, what a beautiful scene there. The family hopes the fields will be ready to go for leagues to start playing next summer. Now, you couldn't ask for better weather than we've had on this Labor Day weekend, but you probably noticed it felt a little warmer today. Meteorologist Jim Caldwell has an early look at that forecast, Jim. And it's a trend that's going to continue, it looks like, uh, around here, Sam, as we head through today, tomorrow, and through uh, the end of the week. We will see temperatures pretty close to what we have out there. As we look at some of our headlines as we move ahead, we are still talking about the short week getting steamy. So, short week, a lot of people didn't have to work today, obviously. Sam and I and many others here are still working hard for you. A few more 90-degree days this week, and storms will also be here later on. That means chances of showers, thunderstorms could lead us to some much better air as well. Right now, area-wide, mid and upper 80s, we've dropped off a degree here in Lexington. We've been hovering right at 90 all day. Now we are backing off into the upper 80s. Still very, very warm for you. A few showers and thorns of, uh, storms have shown up uh, just out to our west across parts of Indiana. That's as close as they've been, and that's uh, really the only chance we have out there today and for the next few days. You can see Friday, Saturday, maybe late Thursday, we could be tracking a few showers and storms. Once that peak chance of showers and storms gets into town, we have the cool air that will follow it in. I'll break that down coming up in just a few minutes, Sam. Jim, thank you. The well, numbers are mind-boggling. This year alone, 700,000 people will die with Alzheimer's disease. There's no cure, no way to prevent it or slow it down. One Lexington expert says it's a bigger threat than the terrorist of ISIS. To find a cure, hundreds of Kentuckians have volunteered and agreed to do something extraordinary. When they die, they're donating their brains for research. A warning, you may find some of the pictures in the first part of this story disturbing. You're in the neuropathology lab of UK's Sanders Brown Center on Aging. They're trying to figure out why and how Alzheimer's kills the brain. That's not a model. That's <laughs> not a model. That's a wow. Brain. In this ordinary looking plastic container sits the brain of a 100 year old woman. This is a human brain, and the most important thing that we do. Uh, is to acknowledge first and foremost that this is a human person. It's a part of a human being. Volunteers who donate their brain for research are crucial to finding answers. Honoring our research volunteers and uh, is the most important thing. You're seeing and then holding a brain for the first time is incredible. The average brain weighs just three pounds. It feels soft, almost rubber-like. Dr. Nelson does not believe this woman had Alzheimer's disease. What would this look like if they had Alzheimer's? It would, be, it would be much more shrunken down. You can see there's a very big difference between somebody who has a normal sized brain and somebody who has a shrunken up Alzheimer's brain. There's so much space here that wasn't there in uh, the normal brain. It's because the brain just shrinks away and shrivels and, and so much of it gets taken away in the blood as it gets destroyed. Under a microscope, a brain sample with Alzheimer's shows black plaque everywhere. It's taking over and killing brain tissue. And it's just a real tragedy. These people 
people live to their whole life, they scrimp and save, and then they retire, and then it steals their brain, it steals their spirit, it steals their soul. My whole life, my heart and my soul are hers forever. Uh, I loved her from the day I got married. Ron and Carol Borkowski just celebrated 54 years of marriage. He's the best thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> Carol was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease four years ago. Ron is her full-time caregiver. They say they've never been closer. As obstacles and challenges come in your life, that uh, God puts it there for a purpose. And right now, uh, we, we function best when we're together. Early on, they decided not to hide Carol's disease, to get out of the house and stay active. No room for feeling sorry for themselves. We just accept that as, all right, this is a challenge in life for, for us, so we'll continue to go out and live life as best we can, as normally as we can. The ladies in Carroll's bowling league help remind her when it's her turn. We watched her bowl two strikes. It's the best morale booster you can get. There's no medicine that can do that. We try to treat her like we did before. Her attitude when she's bowling is super. She's just happy. The Borkowski's weekly routine includes the indoor track at LA Fitness and some of the exercise machines. Through it all, Ron must constantly remind Carol where they're going and why. Alzheimer's takes short-term memory first. Hi, Carol. <laughs> Hi, sweetheart. How are you? <laughs> Ron even takes Carol to work occasionally. He's in sales for the Lexington Legends, and their staff welcomes Carol. They keep her busy, all in a supportive, positive way. But the cold, hard truth is, Carol's condition is only going to get worse. By donating their brains, the Borkowskis will know they've done all they can to fight this disease. They're holding her hand right now. Mm -hmm. Well, I just he holds on to me a lot. You know, I just don't <laughs> and that's want to, okay with me. <laughs> I just don't want to get lost, so she holds on to me. To, yes, you might wander off. Wonderful couple. I asked Dr. Nelson if we could see a cure to Alzheimer's disease in my lifetime. He said they could be one year away or a hundred years, but he's never been more optimistic. The Sanders Brown Center on Aging, by the way, just received eight million dollars to help with their research. The curtain is coming down tonight at a Lexington movie theater. Next, find out which movie will be the last one shown there. And then UK football coach Mark Stoops talking today about what went wrong in the Cats' loss to Southern Mississippi over the weekend. The latest news on WKYT.com. Join the conversation on Twitter and become a part of the WKYT Facebook family. Labor Day marks the end for a longtime Lexington movie theater. This is the last day for Cinemark's Wood Hill Movies 10 on Codell Drive. It was the first movie theater in Lexington to offer stadium seating, but Cinemark reported that revenue for the theater has been declining over the last year. The last movie shown at the theater will be Bad Moms. It starts at 1010 tonight. New tonight, a new roller coaster in the Smoky Mountains has officially reopened. Leaders of Dollywood in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, say they took lightning rod out of ride rehearsal mode on Friday, and it reopened to the public just in time for Labor Day weekend. The ride first opened earlier this year, but closed a week later after some parts of the roller coaster were recalled. Dollywood leaders say in recent weeks the ride has been running consistently well with no issues. Now, your hour by hour forecast with meteorologist Jim Caldwell. Heat battles back out there across Kentucky. Over the weekend, we were much cooler, humidity was low, and it felt fantastic for many of us. Now we are going to watch uh, more upper 80s and low 90s come fighting back this week. I'll tell you what we've got out there right now. Upper 80s, pretty common here in central Kentucky, still holding on to some of the mid uh, into eastern Kentucky as well. So uh, 89 in Lexington, 88 Danville hot, but it's not off the charts. And we have seen this happen many, many times as you get into September. But there's going to come a time very soon where it's going to get hard to push daytime highs like this. 
So we're getting into a change here. We're getting those low sun angles or lower sun angles. So uh, things are changing, my friends. Muggy meter over the next few days, you will notice an increase in humidity. Tuesday, eh, maybe a little bit. We get into Wednesday and especially into Thursday, and that's when it builds in. I can show you on a, an actual map. Let me back it up and show you exactly. Everywhere you find yellow, keep in mind, that's truly tropical air. We're talking about uh, dew points coming in in the 70s. Here in Kentucky, we're at 5 o'clock tomorrow. You have some of those upper 60s, so we're getting to that muggier feel. Let's advance into Wednesday, and you notice that muggier air mass is working a little bit deeper into Kentucky. So Wednesday, again, you start noticing it a little bit more. Then we cross over into Thursday, and we peak. We're out ahead of this front. This energy is driving it in here. So then we are in the muggy air again. That's when it starts feeling a little more uncomfortable around here. So we can actually track the air mass. On Defender Radar Network, we're going to be quiet, I think, the next few days. There might be an isolated shower and thunderstorm that tries to go up in certain areas once we get that humidity level up there. Then that's the reason, as you were seeing with, uh, as we were tracking that air mass, it's already kind of muggier north and west of here. So they have some juice in the atmosphere to fire off a shower and thunderstorm. That's why we're running into it there across Indiana. Just not a lot widespread. Here's the hour by hour forecast. We're holding on to the heat here this evening, so if you have any plans to, to get out and uh, go to a cookout or what have you for on this Labor Day, things are going to be pretty warm for you until the sun goes down. And even during the overnight, we're in the upper 60s, but you do catch some relief. By noon, we're already in the mid-80s, and we get into the afternoon and evening tomorrow, and the low 90s are back in town. And it gets even warmer into Wednesday. I think we're around 91 for an actual daytime high at that point. And now more 90s widespread, deeper even into parts of eastern Kentucky as well. So we're trending upward here with those temperatures. Seven-day forecast, let's give it a good look because we have a lot happening with it. You see the heat in the beginning of it, and then just like this last forecast we were putting together for this past weekend, you get to that point and there's another big force in the atmosphere that changes everything. So we'll go from those 80s back down to the 70s. This time it's a little bit deeper. So mm -hmm. Last week, uh, or this past weekend, upper 70s, low 80s. Nothing subtle about it. I mean, 90, then the high of 76 <laughs> a few days later. Boom, done. Yeah. There you go. And we'll peak again in another swing next week. It's going to be a wild ride, but fun. All right. <laughs> Drop the mic now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. <laughs> Brian, it's easy for the UK fans to just look at the negative. Uh, I can understand from Saturday's loss. It is, but even when you look at the positives, there is still a hint of negative. You'll see what I mean in just a moment. But how about Drew Barker's play? That was extremely positive. Sports is on the way. It is rather easy to pile on the UK football team after Saturday's stunning 44 35 loss to Southern Miss, and many of you have been doing just that. Even with some of the positives, though, it still comes with a negative connotation. This is what I'm talking about. The Wildcats seemingly could do no wrong on offense in the first half. Drew Barker was dissecting the Golden Eagles, and all was well as the lead rapidly escalated. But with such quick strikes, it kept putting the defense back on the field. Don't take this out of context because I always want to score points. But if you look at our offense in the first half, it, it, we scored in, in touchdowns on, with two play drives. So the defense is on the field, on the field, on the field. You start three and out, five play, missed field goal. Uh, then it's two play touchdown, two play touchdown, seven play touchdown. You know, then there's another three and out in there. We had 10 possessions of under three plays. And so your defense is going to be on the field. And, and we just got to find a way to respond. Now, Drew Barker was absolutely amazing in his first season opening start. His four touchdowns, the most in a season lid lifter since Tim Couch cooked the Cardinals in 1998 in that season opener in Louisville. Barker, 15 of 24, 323 yards and those four touchdowns. Barker says Southern Miss made it easy in the first half. Yeah, I mean, they were, they were giving us the deep ball. They were bringing their safeties up, playing the run, so that gave us the post and, um, you know, the deep balls. So. Uh, yeah, it was working really good in the first half, and you know, like I said, we just got to translate that to the second. It looked ready. A lot of players made a lot of plays. I feel like in certain units there were times where we executed well, and then and then there were times where we didn't. So I feel like we just got to take criticism the right way and take the positive stuff the right way as well. We can't let it get over our heads. 
That was a tough one to lose, though. The Wildcats open SEC play Saturday at Florida. The Gators have won 29 straight in this series. The game begins Saturday afternoon, 3.30. You can see it on CBS and WKYT. It doesn't really matter the sport, does it? There's an intense dislike when Louisville and Kentucky get together. Tomorrow at the Bell Soccer Complex, it's the cats of the cards. The last time these two teams played in Lexington was a couple of years ago when a record crowd watched the Wildcats and the Cardinals. And rest assured, this is a game the Wildcats want and need to win. They're a good team, but this year, like, they'll be playing a different team than they did last year. They beat us 2-0. Um, I think the guys are pretty excited. I know I'm pretty excited as well. And um, looking forward to playing them. You know, we haven't beat them since we've been here, and it's you know long four years of building process, and I feel like we're at a point now where the team that we thought we could be. So we're confident going into this game, and you know, we're looking to get first victory of you know, our guys' college campaign. So we will have highlights of that tomorrow between the Cats and the Cards from the Bell Soccer Complex. That sports will be right back.